Good day, my friends. As we recently discussed the cultural history of the Yao Ra, I realized that I didn't have nearly enough time to discuss the various tribes of Zela that still persist on the Azim Steppe to this day. Currently, there are roughly 51 known tribes on the steppe, but this number is known to change for a variety of reasons from merging together or simply killing each other. So today, I'll be attempting to cover all of them as quickly and thoroughly as I can for you all. But before we begin, know that not all of these tribes live near the center of the Azim Steppe. Some live on the eastern coast, and others live within the Tail Mountains, which span Othard's north and west edge. Not only that, but some of these tribes live brutal lifestyles, so if you are easily upset, this knowledge isn't for you. With all that out of the way, we've got a lot of different cultures and philosophies to cover today, so let's get right into it. The Adar Kim. This tribe is recorded as being the largest of all the Zayla tribes, but this also makes them one of the most dysfunctional. Instead of training regimes and military tactics, the Adar Kim simply try to overwhelm any threat with their vast numbers. Rarely are they worried about casualties, as they'll simply replenish their ranks after raiding any other Zayla tribes and adding their defeated foes to their list. The Angura. This is a small tribe that's rarely seen as they live in the snowy mountains of northeast Othard. But what's interesting about them is that the glare of the sun overhead combined with the reflection of light from the icy snow has changed their skin to a unique shade. Eyewitnesses have said that the tone resembles a deep, rusty color. The Arulak. This tribe was thought to have been dead for almost two whole centuries but was recently rediscovered living peacefully in a valley in Othard's northern mountains. The Avagnar. This is one of the tribes that was recently conquered and absorbed into the previously mentioned Adar Kim. However, multiple proud members of this tribe still use their ancestral name, likely hoping to break away and return to their own lifestyle one day. The Bayron. This tribe is known to be of a respectable size, and lives deep in the southern desert. The Bayron are often called the masters of the sands, as they've learned how to live in such a dry and dangerous place rather comfortably. Though, part of this survivability comes from being trained at a very young age to... recycle their own bodily fluids to stave off dehydration. The Bayakwood. While this tribe lives in the westmost section of the steppe, it is also known for its women often taking on up to several husbands at once. This is a tradition they've kept alive since their tribe was founded by their matron 2,000 years prior. If accurate, this means that their tribe's history stretches back to the 5th Astral Era, at least a few hundred years before the Floods. The Bolir. This tribe is rather small, but makes its living by collecting the dung of various monsters. This dung is eventually dried and turned into charcoal for their fires, and any excess is sold and traded to the other tribes for goods and resources. The Borlock. This tribe is only made up of women, with no males allowed in any capacity under any circumstance. These women will go out and mate with the men of other tribes before returning home, and if they give birth to a boy, the infant is cast out once it reaches one year of age. The Eric. This tribe actually follows the Borlock at a distance, and any boys abandoned by their mothers are taken in by them unconditionally. This tribe will then raise the children as they would their own sons. The Baduga. On the other side of that coin, this tribe is made up of only men. They replenish their numbers by defeating or kidnapping other males within the Azim Steppe before indoctrinating them into their tribe. Though recently, they've been spotted working alongside another tribe called the Oronir. The Dalamik. This is one of the few Zela tribes that is no longer nomadic. Instead of roaming, they inhabit one of the islets located on the One River. The Jungid. This tribe is recorded as currently being the second largest Zela tribe and lives alongside the east coast of Othard. The size of their tribe is due to their rivalry with another tribe called the Karalu, 
with whom they do ritual combat once a year to decide who rules over a large section of the continent's east coast. The Karlu. This tribe is the third largest Zela tribe and is the rival of the Jungid. They also have these numbers in order to win the aforementioned ritual combat for the east coast once a year. The Katayin. This tribe is known to disappear into the Tail Mountains for three-fourths of the year hunting goats. They are only ever seen one-fourth of the year resting at the foot of the mountains and living off of the jerky they created whilst traveling that year. The Malkir. This is a western tribe that distinguishes itself with the unique way it chooses its leaders. Instead of doing battle, the rivals must win a game of Karakik. This is a game that resembles chess, but uses a circular board which is divided into three distinct rings. The Mongkad. This is another East Coast tribe that is known to use blow darts coated in pufferfish poison. The members of this tribe are so proficient with their darts, they're known to hit a target at 200 paces with nearly perfect accuracy. The Mirkid. This is another desert tribe that is known to travel between 100 secret caches over the course of a year to ensure they never starve. These caches are always restocked during times of plenty. The Noikin. This tribe is known for its mastery over the training and riding of horses. Many of the greatest horses on the Azim Steppe are stated to come from this tribe. It's said that the horsewives of this tribe can break any beast within only a week of training. The Olkund. Through selective breeding, this tribe gives birth to the largest men on the Azim steppe, which given the Al Ra's already impressive height is rather remarkable. However, it would seem that the women never increased in size despite this process. The Daz Kar. The men of this tribe are expected to do the day-to-day -day chores such as cooking, cleaning, and child-rearing while also protecting their homes and killing any intruders. This is because the women are always hunting and intimidating other tribes. Many keep their distance, as these women are regarded as being some of the greatest archers in the world. The Oronir. All members of this tribe believe themselves direct descendants of Azim, the Dawnfather. As such, they believe that rulership of the steppe is their birthright, and they always make sure they are strong enough to try and prove it. The Arok. This tribe is known for creating sleds made of reeds and horse fat in order to carry their belongings and their children across the steppe's grasslands with ease. The Karel. Members of this tribe wear suits of armor made of bone. These bones come from the steppe tigers that the warriors are expected to kill with their bare hands once they come of age. Though recently, the tribe was ambushed by a group of exiles and were almost completely wiped out. However, there were survivors, and the Kuril have the chance to start rebuilding their tribe, especially since one of their warrior women got her revenge on the exiles. The Torgud. This is yet another desert tribe, but one that refuses to wear clothes. Instead of apparel, they coat themselves in white paint created from mud, lime, and bone meal in order to fight back the desert sun. The Tumet. At the young age of 10, all the children of this tribe are tied to sacred trees before getting left behind by their families. If the child can break free of their bonds, survive, and catch up to the tribe, they are finally given their true name as well as being made a proper member of the tribe. The Ugand. This tribe is known for its death rituals. When a member of this tribe dies, their head is removed and placed in a jar of fermented goat's milk. Once the liquid in this jar evaporates, the head is buried under an anthill so that the insects can carry the soul of the Zela into the afterlife. Their belief is that the journey to the other side is harrowing, filled with screaming ghosts and horrid monstrosities. So, making sure their spirit is drunk and carried by ants makes this journey infinitely easier on them. The Uyagir. 
This is another tribe that is no longer nomadic. The Uyghur live in limestone caves along the northern edge of the desert. They live meagerly, as to punish themselves for the greed and selfishness of their ancestors. The Doro. This is one of the most elusive tribes of Zela in history. They avoid contact with most other tribes at all costs. And if anyone who isn't part of their tribe is spotted approaching them, they are ordered to break down camp and move. Though, in a twist of fate, one of their old campsites has now become occupied by dozens of Namazu, who are in fact looking for attention. The Orben. The members of this tribe ride up and down the one river in boats, made out of reeds but reinforced with the scales from their own bodies. The Asian. This tribe is known for living along the one river as well, but instead of walking or using boats, they swim. They're also known to be amazing divers, as they're able to hold their breath for about 15 minutes just to avoid being seen by hostile tribes as they migrate. The Dotharal. While usually stationary, this tribe is known to be one of the most violent on the Azim steppe due to their strong belief in reincarnation. Their tribe asserts that if they die in battle, they will simply be born again given enough time. This philosophy has removed their fear of death. The Hotgo. This is one of the tribes that was recently massacred by the previously mentioned Dotharal. The only surviving members of this tribe are the ones that weren't present during the killing. However, the Hotgo have always been known to decorate themselves with colorful face paints to display their current mood or mindset. The Seagal. This tribe believes that all beastkin are equal to the races of man, and as such, refuse to eat or use them as beasts of burden. Instead, their diet revolves around eating shrubs as well as vilekin. The Kakol. This tribe is entirely made up of orphans and refugees from defeated or destroyed tribes. To honor their heritage, many members add their previous tribe's name to that of Kakol. However, they were recently attacked by the Budaga and scattered to the winds, only for more of them to fall to disease. The Ka. This tribe is unique, as they live on the fringes of Zela-owned lands and purposely interact with the other races of man. They're known to be very friendly, and have even incorporated some aspects of other cultures into their own. The Mole This tribe is rather small, but is very spiritual. They openly worship what they call the Elder Gods, with whom they will attempt to commune before making any major decisions for their tribe. Apparently, thanks to the Elder God's guidance, the Mole have recently risen to a position of power and respect as they welcomed in unlikely allies that most Zela would have rejected. The Gesi. This tribe is known for mastering the art of the Sling Spear, which is a mid-sized javelin that is thrown via a leather sling instead of by hand. This dramatically increases its speed and killing potential. The Kagan. This is a desert tribe that is purely nocturnal. They are fervent worshippers of Nama, the Dusk Mother, and despise Dawnfather Razim. By never stepping out of their tents during the day, their tribe is known to be very pale even when compared to most Zela. The Goro. This tribe believes horses to be the perfect beings. As such, when Azela comes of age, they're married to a horse of the opposite sex instead of to another Zela. But in order to reproduce, they draw lots and form a temporary pair with someone now and then. The Garl. This tribe is known for a ritual they've been practicing for thousands of years. The Garl will fill a sacred urn with the soil of the location they had just camped at before dumping that soil at the next location they stop at. This ritual has been going on for so long that some say all soil on the Azim steppe is now the same soil. The Datak. This tribe is known to be almost constantly moving. They've been known to sleep while riding on their horses and only make camp when the weather is unbearable. The Haragin. 
This coastal tribe is known for carrying the stories of their ancient ancestors, who had apparently built a giant ship and traveled all over the far eastern seas. But apparently they came home after finding an island filled with massive gray monoliths and fire-breathing monsters that were rumored to be made out of steel. The Ura This mountain-dwelling tribe isn't known for hunting or fighting. Instead, they mine the caves within the Tail Mountains and trade the precious gems and metals they find to other tribes for the resources they need. The Mox This is a tribe that resembles sleeper cells. Almost non-existent, they are spread out and live with many different tribes on the Azim Steppe, with those tribes never knowing a member of the Mox is among them. The people of this tribe only recognize each other by a series of ancient hand signs. They will find and talk with each other using these hand signs whenever two different tribes meet up. The Ganek In addition to the Zela's common tongue, this tribe created a series of whistles and clicks that sound like the various cloud and wavekin living on the Azim steppe. The Haro this tribe views overindulgence as a sign of affluence and prestige. While the harsh lifestyles of the Azim Steppe keep most everyone within impressive physical condition, the Haro will purposely overeat and drink copious amounts of water just to bloat their stomachs. The Haima This tribe is a bit of a mystery. Beyond all reason, one of every three pregnancies in this tribe will result in twins. As such, most members of this tribe have a doppelganger, and they use this to their advantage in battle to confuse their enemies. The Malagould This is one of the only Zela tribes known to actually have Aura of the Rain in their ranks. Whether they're returning to the Azim Steppe or any number of reasons, this tribe accepts the rain. And as such, the Malagold have a decent mix of different Aura. The Urumet This desert tribe has an interesting tradition where the elderly members of this tribe are carried on the shoulders of the young. Apparently, this is done in order to see further in the flattest areas of the desert. The Kali This tribe is known as the songbirds of the steppe. Instead of traditional speaking, they communicate through song in order to ensure their emotions are added to their words. The Kastir This tribe never speaks. Ever. They believe all words are lies, and that your actions are all that will be necessary to prove yourself and your intent. Yet despite their lack of words, they've become well known for their trading post called Reunion which has become a neutral ground for all Zela tribes to trade and interact with one another. And that, my friends, is all of the currently known Zela tribes. Make no mistake, over the Aura's existence, there have been many more, but they've either been lost to time or left the Azim Steppe ages ago. This number is most likely to change in the future, as it always has. But only time will tell who survives and who is forgotten. So I ask that you ponder these many mentalities until next we meet. Till then, stay safe my friends. Thank you all for watching to the end. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and share this with your fellow adventurers? With your help, I'll try to reach out even further and bring even greater stories to you. Although, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my biggest contributors. A grand thank you to Rovakis, Potato, Burn My Pancakes, The Yellow Couch, Papaya Cyan, Sage Mouse, Volvalis Oma, Cezanne, Azeri, and Cat, with an additional nod to the scholarships on screen. Links to things like my Twitter and that of my channel artist Caddy can be found in the description. Thank you all for your viewership, as well as your support. And I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Class dismissed.